Vasquez. Deep to right field, back it goes, and that ball is gone. A three-run home run for Ramon Vasquez, and the Rangers take the lead. High fly ball, deep left field, that ball's going to go. Way back for Bird, it's a grand slam. High fly ball to left field, and that ball is going to go. The second grand slam in the game for Texas. And the Rangers now are just laying it on. The date was August 27, 2007. The Texas Rangers and Baltimore Orioles were set to play a double header after the first game of their three game set was postponed due to weather. The night before, the Orioles cruised to an easy 6 2 victory over Texas, thanks to seven strong innings from their ace, Eric Bedard. The Rangers had been going through it offensively, only scoring 14 runs over the last week. Neither team had playoff hopes, with both Baltimore and Texas sitting towards the bottom of their respective divisions. The Rangers, specifically, brought out a depleted lineup for Game 1 of this doubleheader. Their third base coach, Don Wakamatsu, recalled the coaching staff themselves not being too confident in this lineup, which was missing several key starters. The Rangers lineup had become a mix of veterans and young guys with something to prove. Besides perennial all-star Michael Young, this group was lackluster at best. Their best hitter, Mark Teixeira, had been traded the month prior in exchange for several prospects. One of the names was catcher Jared Saltalamacchia, who hit 8th in this game. Typical starters Gerald Laird and Sammy Sosa were out as they rested for game two. Everyday third baseman Hank Blaylock was out as well, on the disabled list until early September after undergoing thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. In this late August game, Michael Young was the only player in the Texas lineup that had played over 100 games to that point. The Rangers would have to rely on role players such as Jason Botts, Ramon Vasquez, and David Murphy to win this game. On the mound, the Rangers started Kaysen Gabbard. Gabbard was acquired from the Boston Red Sox earlier that year, along with the starting left fielder for this game, David Murphy. Gabbard was out of the league after 2008, but had his best major league season here in 2007. In the other dugout, it was a normal game for the Baltimore Orioles. They played almost all of their everyday starters for game one. Only designated hitter Aubrey Huff rested the first game and was replaced by RJ House, who was called up just two weeks prior. Besides the rookie House, the O's lineup was basic. Led by Brian Roberts and Nick Markakis, Baltimore had no issues hitting. Where they lacked was on the mound. Besides Bedard and Jeremy Guthrie, the Orioles' starting rotation struggled heavily. Starting game one was Daniel Cabrera. Entering the doubleheader, Cabrera was struggling through the 2007 season, and things weren't going to improve anytime soon. The team leader in innings pitched was in for a long night. This late August doubleheader between two teams was nothing to play for but pride, would soon become the biggest blowout in Major League Baseball history. Despite this game finishing in a record-breaking demolition, the first five innings were rather commonplace. The Orioles jumped out to a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the first on a single by Corey Patterson, and a wry throw caused Brian Roberts to scamper home. After a scoreless second inning, the O's tacked on two more, thanks to a Nick Markakis RBI ground rule double and Miguel Tejada RBI single. At the end of the third inning, it was 3-0 birds. No one knew it yet, but that would be the last of Baltimore's offense for the game. The next half inning, the Rangers answered back. Rookie Jared Saltalamacchia struck a two-run single in a center field to make it a 3-2 ball game. The very next batter was Ramon Vasquez, a man known more for his glove than his bat. Vasquez was in for the game of his life. Vasquez opened up his tab for the day with a three-run blast down the right field line. Texas now held a 5-3 lead, and from here, it gets ugly. A scoreless fifth inning was the calm before the storm, as the Rangers would put up a nine spot in the sixth. A leadoff solo shot from Saltalamacchia would make it 6-3, knocking Daniel Cabrera out of the game. Replacing him was Brian Burris. 2007 was Burris' first full season in the bigs. He was used as a fringe starter, mostly getting thrown into mop-up roles. Burris' night started and ended in the top of the sixth. His outing started with a leadoff single from Ron Vasquez. Frank Catalanado walked to put two on. With two on and one out, Michael Young singled to load the bases. Next, up stepped Marlon Byrd. The 29-year-old was having a good season, batting 317 coming into the game. After the Rangers traded Kenny Lofton the month prior, Bird took over the starting job in center field. He was never known for his power, especially in 2007. Entering the game, he'd only hit five homers in 74 games. But here, he struck a power surge, sending an 0-1 curveball deep into the left field seats for a grand slam. The score was now 10-3. Jason Botts followed with a strikeout looking, but Texas wasn't done by any means. A two-out rally ensued with five straight singles that scored three. Brian Burris's day was done after only recording two outs. Baltimore stuck with their depleted bullpen and sent out Rob Bell to try and stop the bleeding at 13-3. After one more RBI on a single for Ian Kinsler, Bell got Michael Young to fly out to end the inning. 14 batters came to the plate, 9 scored. 
Every swing we took, even if it was a bad swing, the ball would fall in or find a hole, said Ramon Vasquez. Rangers starting pitcher Kaysen Gabbard finished up his outing with a hitless bottom of the sixth. Wes Littleton came on to pitch the seventh, with his only task being to get outs. Holding on to a 14-3 lead, this shouldn't be a tough task. He pitched a scoreless seventh inning, as did Rob Bell. The Orioles pitched a scoreless inning. They had things in order now, right? Rob Bell, with his 418 ERA, had this Rangers lineup taken care of, right? Oh, poor Rob. He didn't record an out in the inning. A leadoff single by David Murphy. Two walks and RBI singles from Frank Catalanato and Ian Kinsler left the bases loaded. With the score now 16-3, upset Travis Metcalf, pinch hitting for Michael Young. The 25-year-old Metcalf was called up earlier in the day as the 26th man for the doubleheader. He hadn't made an MLB appearance in nearly a month, and this was a great opportunity to show his offensive capabilities. Metcalf took a 2-0 slider a dozen rows deep to left field for Texas's second grand slam of the day, making it a 20-3 ball game. After a walk to Marlon Bird, Rob Bell's day was over. His once 4.18 ERA ballooned to 6.14 from this outing alone. Bell faced seven batters in the top of the eighth, unable to retire any. To give up a grand slam in that situation, the air goes out of it. How big a hole can I dig and hide in? Your mind almost goes blank. You almost go to a place of being numb, Bell said. Earlier in the day, the Orioles had named Dave Tremblay the official manager, removing his interim tag. Tremblay had spent 20 years in baseball before beginning the 2007 season as Baltimore's bullpen coach. It was a hard-earned and exciting opportunity that Texas quickly put a damper on. Tremblay sauntered out to the mound for another pitching change, this time calling for the last man on the bullpen death chart, right-handed 36-year-old Paul Shuey. Shuey had had a unique MLB run, most notably retiring in 2004 due to a hip injury. After an experimental procedure, Shuey attempted to come back in 2007, but it wasn't going very well. He rocked a 6.75 ERA in only 22 and two-thirds innings as he entered what would be the second-to-last game of his career. Shuey came in and struck out Jason Botts, doing something that Bell was unable to do, recording out in the inning. But the next three batters all reached. Cruz doubled, Murphy recorded his fourth hit of the day, which drove in Bird, and Salta Lamacchia topped it all off with a big three-run jack for his second bomb of the day. The score was now 24-3, a rare sight in any baseball scorebook. Shuey was able to strike out Vasquez and Catalanado to end the inning, but more damage had been done. A 10-run eighth inning put Texas in exclusive company. This was only the 28th game of 24 or more runs scored since 1913. The record was 29, set by the Red Sox in 1950, and matched by the White Sox in 1955. Although the Rangers might not have known that at the time, they weren't going to slow down by any means. This Rangers lineup was full of guys with something to prove to prove they could hang in the big league, to prove they could be a key part of this team's future, which was looking bright with a strong farm system. Tremblay made the decision to leave Shuey in to finish the game after Shuey told Tremblay that he wanted to stay in and save the rest of the bullpen's arms. It's easy to forget there was a second game after a thrashing like this. It was a heroic sacrifice from Paul Shuey, but he was finished. The inning began with Shuey walking Kinsler and Metcalf, followed by a single to Bird that loaded the bases. This brought up Jason Botts, who somehow had yet to record an RBI in the game. He avoided infamy by lacing a double down the right field line, scoring two and making it a 26-3 game. Two batters later, David Murphy recorded his fifth hit of the night and third infield single, driving in one more and making it 27-3. The Rangers were now in real special company. Only four other teams had scored 27 or more runs in a single game since 1913, and no one had done it in over 50 years. Salta Lamacchia struck out for the second out of the inning, so it would take something of a miracle to make unprecedented history. With two runners on, the potential 30th and record-breaking run stepped to the plate. It was Ramon Vasquez, who despite not being known for his hitting ability, was having quite the game offensively. He'd smashed a homer back in the fifth and collected another RBI with a single in the sixth. He wanted to respect the game, but knew he couldn't pass up a chance at history. With a 1-0 advantage in the count, Vasquez turned on the next pitch, sending it deep to right. The hardliner looked like it might hit off the tall wall in right field at Camden Yards, but kept carrying all the way onto the Utah Street Concourse for a massive three-run home run. With that one swing, the 2007 Texas Rangers were in the history books. Bottom of the ninth was pretty straightforward, with Littleton setting down the Orioles 1-2-3. Littleton was credited with a three-inning save of a 27-run lead, the most lopsided save of all time. Both dugouts were shocked with the result of this one. It wasn't Cowboys vs. Ravens, but something better. So many crazy statistics came from this blowout. All 10 Texas hitters had at least one hit and one run scored. Five different Rangers had at least three hits. As a team, they hit 509 for the game and tallied 29 hits total. 
Ramon Vasquez and Jared Saltalamacchia each homered twice and drove in seven runs each. They're the first pair of teammates to do so since 1950 and third ever. They did it from the eighth and ninth spots in the lineup, which makes it even more impressive. Texas set the record for most runs scored in a doubleheader before the second game even began. The Rangers scored 30 runs in only four innings total, the fourth, sixth, eighth, and ninth innings. And this is the only time in baseball history that three relievers, Brian Burris, Rob Bell, and Paul Shuey, allowed at least seven runs each in the same game. That's not really a statistic you want to be a part of. After the game, Dave Tremblay said, there were guys in that lineup for Texas who had career days that day. But have you ever heard from them again? He laughed, adding, that's baseball. This truly was a game for the little guys. Role players made this game. For guys like Ramon Vasquez, Travis Metcalf, and David Murphy, this game meant a lot. Nothing is guaranteed in Major League Baseball. Jason Botts, Kaysen Gabbard, and Wes Littleton were all out of the league by the end of the next season. For those guys, this night potentially was their greatest in the bigs. As for the second game of that doubleheader, it was much more normal. The Rangers won 9-7 behind another big game from Travis Metcalf. It was truly the best day of his career. Two games, a grand slam, and eight RBIs. To this day, the 33 game still stands in MLB's history books. In 2020, the Atlanta Braves got close, defeating the Miami Marlins 29-9, the closest any team has come to matching the Rangers' massive total. There's a chance that no one in this lifetime will see something like this ever again. In baseball, anything can happen. Our national pastime's rich history has been full of astonishing feats. Legends of the game have done spectacular things that today's players can only hope to do. This record, though, it's not for the legends. This one is for guys like Botts, Saltalamacchia, Murphy, Metcalf, and Vasquez. Thanks to one special night, they'll forever have their names etched in history. I've been Matthew Perry from GMs for Hire, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.